Hello and welcome back to Anton Math. Now we just finished talking about the inverses of functions and in this video I just wanted to go over some of the properties of the inverses of functions. What we can and can't expect um, when we're taking the inverses of functions. Um, but first I needed to define something. I need to define my identity function. So given any set s, we can define an identity function i sub s that goes from s to s defined by i s equals s. So in other words i as a relation is the set of all ordered pairs of s for all of the elements s in the set s. Now something to note, this is just our identity relation from before. Um, our identity relation did meet the criteria for a function and in fact is the same thing as this identity function. Right? Now I need that to talk about some of these properties here. So let's let f from s to t be any function. This should be a little Let's let f from s of t be any function. Uh, the identity function on t composed with f is equal to f is equal to f composed with the identity function on s. So nothing special here. Suffice it to say that if we have composition of these identity functions, then we can cancel it in this sense. You know, if we if we end up getting something over here that turns into an identity function on t, then we can kind of cancel it and drop it uh, to f. Now the second one says, if f is 1 to 1 and on to, or in other words, if the inverse exists, then f inverse composed with f is the identity mapping on s, and f composed with f inverse is the identity mapping on t. So let me go into a little more detail here. If we ever get to the situation where we have f inverse of f of x, we can kind of use 1 and 2 as a cancellation. These are going to compose with each other and become the identity function of t and, uh, or sorry, the identity function of a, uh, s and that's just going to drop out. So this is just going to be x, right? In other words, this is the identity function on my domain. The identity function of any element of my domain is that element. And if I have the other one, if I have f of f inverse of some y, that's just going to be y. In other words, I can cancel out this f and f inverse, and I just get the identity mapping on my codomain t. Okay. Now the third one, if g is a function from r to s, and both f and g are 1 to 1 and on to, or in other words, their inverses are both functions, then the inverse of the composition, f composed with g, and we can write it in a couple of different ways, is denoted by taking the whole thing and putting that little negative one that we've been using to indicate inverse and this is going to be a function from t to r and we have this identity again from our relation this is going to be the same f composed with g inverse is equal to g inverse composed with f inverse so if we have these one to one and onto functions we can take the inverse of our composition without a problem but both g and f need to be one to one and onto otherwise either g inverse or f inverse will not be functions and this inverse um, of the composition is going to be really the composition of a function and a relation that's not a function, right? And remember this last part right here, uh, this makes sense because if um, we're looking at the composition f composed with g, then we're taking this little r through g to s, that little s through f to t, and the inverse function needs to do the exact opposite. We need to go from t to s and then from s to r. And that's exactly what this does here, right? g inverse or sorry, f inverse, because we go from the right, goes from t to s, and then we compose that into g inverse, which goes from s to r, uh, exactly undoing what we did with f composed with g. Okay, so these are just some properties of the inverses. The most common you'll use is something along these lines. If we have a function and its inverse composed with each other, we can cancel them out in a certain sense and resolve them down just to the identity mapping. So whatever you're plugging in in the domain is going to be the image of that identity mapping. All right, that's the end of our discussion on functions, and we're going to get into counting here pretty soon, so we'll see you there.